Well, good morning, everyone. This is Christy again, and I am saying good morning from Eastern Montana. Um, as you can tell, I'm just now getting ready. I've got no makeup on, my hair's in rollers. Um, I did a 30 second, I counted, 30 second cold water shower. Ooh, that was really cold. And um, my back still is hurting, but it is getting better. So I'm, I'm up moving around, walking slow, but doing well. Uh, thank you for those who were concerned. And, uh, but later today, I'll be doing a couple of errands. And one of them is I'm gonna go down to the Epic, which is uh, Eastern Plains Event Center, EPEC. And I will meet Tim Sheehy. So we'll see what he is uh, all about. And uh, hopefully I'm allowed to videotape. If not, I'll kind of give you a recap and uh, we'll go from there. Um, and I'll take you on my journey for the day. So you see what I what I do during the day uh, on a typical Monday. Uh, meeting Tim Sheehy is not a typical Monday activity. So, but it's, it's there. So anyways, I'll see y'all later. Well, it's another beautiful day and I'm starting my errands as, as you can tell, I'm outside. Look at the, look at the gorgeous blue sky. Sun's out. Look at that. That is just totally, absolutely gorgeous. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and do some errands and you're coming with me. It's currently 46 degrees on this Columbus day. So we're going to go ahead and get started on our journey. So I'm only going to get a couple things at Albertsons. One is creamer and bread, and that's all I need to get. We'll see how much that costs here in Glendive. And while I was shopping, I saw some coffee on sale for my husband, so I grabbed that. So the two cans of coffee and the bread and creamer was 20-20. Well, it took me about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes to do my errand. And I just went to the grocery store, showed you basically where I go grocery shopping. That's where I get about half my groceries from. The other half, I go to a, a grocery store, which is across the street called Reynolds Markets. All right, again, we will continue our journey. So let's take a look and see if she is out of food. And by golly, she is. Let's go ahead and fill it up. So before I leave um, and post this assembly with Tim Sheehy, I just wanted to let you know that I typically don't post anything that's political. It's just that in our small town of Glendive, rarely do we get anybody like a senator come here. So, or anybody running for a Senate office such as that come here to, to Glendive, little old town of 5,000. So it, I was curious, I signed up and away we go. So it's about, let's see what time it is. It's about 11.30 and I am walking down to the Epic, which is only about three blocks from where I live, to see Tim Sheehy and what he all has to say. So here we go. Here's 
City Hall. So let, let's all stand up. But anyways, listen, thank you for coming out. We have about three weeks left, and, and our nation's at a crossroads. And I've been asked by so many people, what is it we can do to help the most? Very simple, vote. Show up and vote. And I know that sometimes voting feels pointless. It feels like you're throwing your ballot into an oblivion. The reality is, your vote does count. And voting is a right, but you know what? As an American, it's a privilege. Because we are privileged to be, we're blessed to be Americans. I've been in 93 countries around the world. I've carried a gun in a lot of them. Uh, we are so lucky to call this country home. And we're not perfect, far from it. We got our fair share of problems. But there's nowhere left in the world to go. We're it. We're the last stand of freedom. Uh, we're the last stand of a country that still enshrines God as part of our culture. We're the last country that promotes the rights of the individual above that of the state. And it's important to remember that's what this country was founded on. About of all things, it was founded on the rights of the individual, that each person is a brain and a soul and a spirit unique from everyone else. And our Constitution enshrined that. Uh, it didn't grant that, it enshrined it, because those rights are God-given. And we're the only country, the first country and really the only country to say, we are going to base the United States of America on the souls of thousands of time, now millions of individuals. And, and the, con the conglomerated activity of those individuals will build the greatest country in the history of mankind. And what we're seeing every single day from foreign adversaries and sometimes from our own country is a slow march to take those individual rights away and give them to the government. And then the government holds on to them and decides when they're going to give them back to you. And that's unacceptable. That's not what this country was founded on. That's what we're marching towards one step at a time. So our nation is at a crossroads. We have many, many very important elections this cycle. Obviously nothing more important than sending President Trump back to the White House for his second term. We saw how much he did in his first term. We need to let him finish what he started. He needs one more term. But make no mistake, if he does not have a Congress that's supporting his actions, we saw last time what happened. He was impeached twice. You know, by the way, your senior senator, John Tester, voted to impeach him two times, not once, but twice. If Trump doesn't have a Senate when he gets there, he will be impeached right away. He will not be able to appoint Supreme Court, court nominees. He'll not be able to appoint judicial nominees that love our Constitution, that will rule based on our Constitution. And we won't be able to support cabinet nominees who also have to be in place to get this country back on track. So the Senate is arguably just as important as the White House this cycle. And our state, Montana, will have the deciding vote of whether or not we have a Republican U.S. Senate or not. And there's a recent poll off by the New York Times of all places that showed us up eight points head to head against John Tester. Eight points, that's a big lead. But then when the question was asked, buried down in that poll was a question asked, I was beating Tester 42 to 44. Do you want a Republican Senate or a Democrat Senate? When that question was asked, the numbers flipped to 58, 37. So Montanans very clearly understand that they need to have a Republican Senate in place if they haven't quite figured out that John Tester is a rubber stamp for everything Biden and Harris have ever done. I've only met Tester twice on the debate stage. Maybe he's a great guy. I don't know. Um, I haven't spent the last year and a half, you know, smearing his name. All I can tell you is this is how he votes. He votes to open our borders. He's voted to let boys play girls sports. He's voted for the Inflation Reduction Act. He works every day to shut down Coal Strip. He shut down Keystone XL Pipeline. He's voted to send hundreds of millions of dollars to Iran. He's voted to continue to fund secret migrant flights. I can go on and on and on. The bottom line is if, if Biden and Harris have done it, Tester has voted for, including voting against all of uh, President Trump's Supreme Court nominees. So as you talk to your family and friends these final three weeks, we're three weeks from election day, but let's remember early voting started a week ago, uh, and early ba voting ballots should be in your mailbox today if you're a registered voter. This election is happening now. It's not in three weeks, it's happening as we speak. And it's critical that you get involved these past couple weeks. These last this last push to the finish line, whether it's knocking doors, handing out yard signs, getting on the phone to make phone calls, or just talking to your friends and family. If you have somebody who is not voting, 
deciding, well, I don't really feel like voting. I'm so jaded by it all. I'm so sick of politics. I'm not going to vote. Remind them that hundreds of thousands of young men and women are buried all over this world in graves with a little white cross over it. And they fought for your right to choose your own leaders. You may not always love that choice, and that may not be your favorite choice, but they fought for your privilege to select your leadership. So do not take that for granted. Literally, young men and women have died in the field of battle to protect that. Do not take for granted. So if you have folks who are not voting, make sure they vote. Make sure they know how to vote. You can vote early. You can vote via mail. You can vote on election day, but just please absolutely vote. Make sure your votes count. Me and all you other veterans who raised your hand in here have fought for that right, so please exercise it. We got a handful of priorities. There's a lot of problems in this country right now, but well, we can solve all of them. But we got to start with number one. We got to secure that border, seal it up day one. There's no questions asked. That's got to happen in a priority number one. Priority number two: stop sending billions of dollars to countries that hate us and want to kill us every day. <laughs> because believe it or not, that's what we're doing. We are sending hundreds of millions of dollars and billions of dollars to countries like Iran and the Taliban every week, who actively want Americans and Americans dead and our country to be weaker and to go away. It's about time we stop doing that, especially when we have Americans who have no water, no power, no food in the wake of disasters, and we're sending money overseas. It makes no sense. So it's about time we start bringing common sense back to our government. And most importantly, we've got to return constitutional function to our three branches of government. Our Constitution was a, an amazingly wise document drafted by geniuses, and we've slowly drifted away from it, especially in these past few decades. We've got to bring back constitutional government. Article one of the Constitution outlines the function of our legislative branch, the Congress, Senate, and House of Representatives. That is supposed to be the, where the rubber meets the road in the American government, the representatives of the people, that's you. And instead, what we've seen is a slow drift towards a massive executive branch that's now taking over everything in this country. So we gotta shift back to our constitutional government. But most importantly, we gotta bring common sense back. Uh, common sense means, as I've traveled all 56 counties in this state, because I knew we'd be outspent by John Tester, so I go places like this, I look people in the eye and shake their hand, and I say, here's why we're running, here's what's important about this election. And that's common sense. Montanans want common sense back. They want a secure border, safe streets, cheap gas, cops are good, the criminals are bad, boys are boys, girls are girls. And that's pretty simple stuff that we all used to agree on like 10 years ago. And now, of course, these are controversial topics that we have to talk about. So we gotta focus on, on those handful of topics, and I think we'll see things start to get back in line in this country. Um, but we can't do it alone. We need your support, not just your vote. We need your help all the way to the finish line. So I'm honored to have today with me Senator Joni Ernst. She came in from Iowa. Uh, my favorite thing about Senator Ernst um, is the fact that, she, like me and like my wife, she's a combat veteran. And right now, we're at the lowest percentage of veterans in the history of this country in the U.S. Capitol. We used to have about 75% of congressmen and senators uh, were veterans. Now it's about 17%. And I believe there's a direct correlation between that and why our military is not ready to fight wars, why we're losing wars, and why we're seeing a breakdown in the, in the basic function of our government. Because when you put that cloth on and you set foot on the field of battle and you swear that oath, uh, you look at things a little bit differently. And it's very important to have folks that have, that have worn the uniform and fought for this country uh, who've stood on that battle line and, and, and know what it means to sacrifice for the country. And Senator Ernst is one of the very few people there uh, who's done that. Additionally, she's a former Woman Army officer, my wife is a Marine Corps officer as well, so uh, I can tell you that being a, a female military officer deployed downrange uh, is a whole other set of challenges, and we have to respect them um, and, and thank them for what they've done. But I'm so honored to have Senator Ernst here from Iowa campaigning with me. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Okay, do you folks have a winner here? in Glendive. How many of you actually live right here in Glendive? This holy cow. Okay, first, I just need to say thank you for turning out. I mean, the level of enthusiasm that we have encountered here is through the roof. So I commend all of you for being so active and engaged. We have three weeks to go in this election cycle. So, Tim, we're with you. I know you're going to drive so hard. Uh, we got to finish this mission, and that comes around on November 5th. So thank you all for turning out. Um, so again, I'm Joni Ernst. I am from the great state of Iowa. Grew up in southwest Iowa, very rural area. Um, I come from a farm family, hogs, soybeans, corn, typical Iowa farms. 
Uh, so grew up, went to Iowa State University, I was there, I joined Army ROTC, went on to serve over 23 years between the Army Reserves and the Iowa Army National Guard. Love them, thank you. So love the, the men and women that I worked with, um, truly did, and ended up commanding overseas from 2003 to 2004 as a transportation company commander with the Iowa Army National Guard. And we ran convoys all through Kuwait and Iraq at the beginning of uh, Iraqi freedom. So, you know, that's what sent me into the United States Senate. I am a lot like Tim in that a dozen years ago, I wasn't aspiring to be a United States Senator. You know, Tim didn't say when he was a kid, hey, I'm going to serve in politics someday. No, he didn't do that. But the state of the nation, and it was this way when I decided to run for United States Senate too, when President Obama was in office, um, Tim's going through that same decision-making process where we see President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in office, the decisions that they make and what President Obama, the decisions he made, they are driving people into politics to do the right thing. Tim Sheehy is here because he sees issues that need to be resolved for the people, the communities that he loves, the state that he loves, and this dear nation that all of us love. So he is giving up on a lot of freedom, a lot of opportunities that he could be engaging in to serve all of you. And it's incredib incredibly important that we have men and women with servants' hearts that are stepping forward to lead the way in Congress. So Tim's right, very few of us have worn our nation's uniform, served under the flag of our country, uh, it's such an incredible honor to do so. But there are many other ways that we can serve as well. So as I've been traveling out and about, and I'm, so, I'm just so privileged to be here with Tim, he's such a motivational leader. Uh, what we are seeing and what I'm hearing all across the country as I'm engaging with voters uh, is that inflation and the economy, it's killing our families. Folks, in Iowa, our families are paying over $1,100 every month compared to where they were four years ago under Donald Trump. $1,100 a month. That's a mortgage payment. That's a really nice car payment, you know, in Iowa. Um, but folks are suffering under this economy. So we have Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, their bad policies, and who goes right along with them on all of these bad policies? Tester. Tester. John Tester. I serve with Senator Tester. You know, he's the one that recruited Vice President Kamala Harris when she joined the Senate. It was John Tester that made the recommendation for his friend Kamala Harris to serve as a senator from California. Okay, he aligns with Kamala Harris. In the Senate, Kamala Harris's voting record, the most liberal ranked by a third party organization, the most liberal in the United States Senate, to the left of Bernie Sanders. Okay, you can't get much further left than Bernie Sanders. <laughs> But Kamala Harris was right there. And who was her dear friend asking her to be part of the liberal left? It was literally John Tester that brought her into the fold. And so now we have this San Diego liberal left senator that became vice president that is now running to be president of our great United States of America with a voting record that is to the left of socialist Bernie Sanders. Thank you very much, John Tester. This is what our nation has come down to. Voted on all these big spending packages, Green New Deal, you name it. The Democrats are out of control in the United States Senate. I serve on the Ag Committee. 
come from a long line of farmers. Farmers back home are wondering, hey, are we ever going to see a farm bill? Well, that farm bill is now at a cost of one and a half trillion dollars. Trillion dollars. And only about 17% at the most of that farm bill actually goes to farm and ranch programs. Okay, the rest is all this Green New Deal, green ideology, blah, blah, blah stuff that's wrapped up into that bill. Thank you very much, John Tester and the Democrats. Okay, it is out of control at Washington, D.C. Tim mentioned a few other things that are near and dear to my heart. I played high school sports, served in the military. My daughter played high school sports. She now serves in the military. John Tester has supported men engaging in women's sporting activities. While he claims to be a champion of women's rights, basic women's rights, we fought for 50 years ago, and it's called Title IX. And now the Democrats are saying, well, what's wrong with having men play in girls' sports? What's wrong with men coming into girls' locker rooms? We all know what's right and wrong. And yet John Tester won't stand up and tell you the truth of the situation. It is wrong. We have to defend our girls. And he's not willing to do it. But damn straight Tim Sheehy will. So we thank you for that, Tim. Thank you. So what's at stake here, folks? I could go on and on about the economy, about energy. We could go on and on about um, certainly the southern border. You know, again, thank you, Kamala Harris. Who brought Kamala Harris in? John Tester. It all comes back to John Tester. Um, we could go on and on about that. But what I want to talk about is why it's so important for us to get the majority of the United States Senate. Okay, we have one race in West Virginia pretty much decided. Okay, it's going to go from Joe Manchin, a Democrat, now an independent, uh, but it's going to go from Democratic hands into Republicans. That puts us at 50-50 in the United States Senate. We are striving for seat number 51. Where is seat number 51 going to be? Here. Here. Right here. Thank you, Tim. from the bottom of my heart for leading the way because folks I don't want to be in the minority any longer we can only make a difference if we are in the majority think about it. we have if God forbid if we have President Kamala Harris if we have a Democratic Senate what does that look like that looks like the filibuster goes away we change the makeup of the Supreme Court, and we start packing it with Democratic nominees, a bunch of whole new justices that lean to the left. We then have DC statehood and Puerto Rican statehood, ensuring four more Democratic senators, which means Republicans will never ever again have a majority in the United States Senate. That's why it's so important, okay? It's why it's so important. We have got to defend our nation, and the way we do it is through the United States Senate. The seat that will put us at 51 is this seat right here with Tim Sheehy. Okay, so we're not over the finish line yet. I know I talk, I, I tell everybody, Tim, that you're gonna win this thing, and it's pretty well done, but it's not. You have to go vote. You are early voting right now. So go vote, okay? Iowa starts here in a couple days. I'm gonna early vote. We should encourage it all across the nation. Vote, get your ballot in the bank. Do it, swamp the vote is what uh, President Trump is saying, swamp the vote, okay? I'll leave you with this. So, in Iowa four years ago, we had one congressional district it was a swing district. It was held by a Democrat. 
Okay, we have a Republican running in that election. Her name was Marionette Miller Makes. Okay, came down to the wire. Everybody's trying to get out to vote. Marionette Miller Makes won that district by six votes. Mm. Not 600, not 6,000, six votes. Let's not let that happen here. Do not take it for granted. You're gonna run through the tape and you're gonna make sure that seat number 51 is Tim Sheehy with the defeat of John Tester in the United States Senate race. You, Montana, are going to put us in the majority. So, God bless you all. It is such a privilege to be here with you today. I am really grateful uh, for all of you, your attention, your enthusiasm, and for making Tim Sheehy uh, our 51st Republican Senator in the United States State Senate 2025. Tim, thank you. God bless you. All right, thank you, Senator Rose. Uh, put your hands on a few things. So, uh, who's who's here because they're tired of high gas prices? Anybody here? What's that's a top issue? Okay. How about immigration? How about inflation? All right. Uh, who's experienced? crime in, in a higher amount here in this past couple years. Anybody experienced any sort of crime in their communities they haven't seen before? Okay. I've been getting a lot of texts about that, actually. I got a text the other day about a, a woman who was carjacked outside of Glasgow, Montana, by gunpoint. This was two weeks ago. Uh, and talking to Austin Knudsen, we've got a great attorney general. Uh, he's talked about how human trafficking is up like 250% in our state just in the last three years alone. So these issues, uh, you know, we're always told local issues, na national issues, and elections local, but John Tester loves to run on local issues because he can't be affiliated with the Democrats' national platform because obviously, as you all raised your hands, it's very unpopular. So he tries to make the election local and say, well, I'm a dirt farmer, and I got a flat top hairdo, and I cut my fingers off with meat grinder and all these other things. So, you know, I'm a local guy. Forget about what's going on national, I'm local, vote for me. Well, all those issues we just talked about there, have been unleashed upon you by John Tester. That's not an exaggeration. Those policies could have met their end in the United States Senate. Our open border, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Green New Deal that's trying to shut down Colstrip but kill Keystone XL, driven our gas prices. It used to be buck fifty when Trump was in office, now it's three fifty, three forty eight, three sixty, you name it. Though all those policies could have been put to bed in the US Senate. They could have been ended and we could have kept on the path of common sense. And Kamala Harris, as vice president, broke more ties than any other vice president in the history of our country, including two-term vice presidents, and she did that in just three and a half years. And the reason she was able to break that tie, who knows why she was able to break that tie? Anybody? John Tester. Because not once did he stand up and say, the people of Montana don't want an open border. They don't want to send billions of dollars overseas. They don't want to print trillions of dollars and cause inflation. They don't want to be forced to drive electric scooters through the snow every day. They want their diesel trucks. And because he never once stood up and, and stopped those policies, Kamala Harris was allowed to break every tie and push those policies through. And he could have stopped it. Joe Manchin did. And Kirsten Sinema from Arizona both stood up. Those are two Democrat senators that stood up and said, these policies are bad for my community. They're bad for our country. I'm going to say no. And guess what? Both those senators were kicked out of their party. They're now independents. And neither is running for re-election as Chuck Schumer turned off the cash ticket and said, nope, you didn't vote for our progressive policies, so we're sending you home. John Tester never had that problem. He voted every single time, and that's why we are now the most expensive election in American history is the Sheehy Tester election on a per vote basis. No one's ever run for office and had more money spent against him per vote than I have right now in this election. And that should follow the money, as they always say, follow the money. He's the number one recipient of lobbyist cash in the entire nation, the top recipient of out-of-state dark money spending, and he's been Chuck Schumer's top priority because they have to hold this seat and they know that it's gonna be a tough battle. So when you go out and talk to people, especially when you're asked about that great guy, uh, Shady Sheehy, I'm sure you've gotten to know him uh, really well. <laughs> I've gotten to know him pretty well too, but uh, I learn something about myself every day, you know. Um, in the last month alone, Shady Sheehy, I think he's closed half the hospitals in the state. Uh, he sold the Yellowstone National Park and <laughs> shut down the VA and, uh, you know, took everyone's cat away, and I don't like babies either, apparently. 
So uh, the reality is um, those are distractions uh, that, that are placed in front of you because they can't talk about the issues of inflation, of crime, of interest rates, of our wide open border. Um, when folks bring those issues up, public lands, I believe public lands should stay public, but guess what? Public lands belong to you, the public. They don't belong to bureaucrats 3,000 miles away. What's happened with our public lands in the last 30 years is radical environmental legal groups and bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. have taken those public lands and they've said, they're ours, they're, they belong to the government. And the fact is, public lands belong to the public, whether that's common sense logging projects, whether that's public access, whether that's water rights, public lands are public. Healthcare, I'm among the largest donors to healthcare in the state. My wife and I, when we became successful in business, we funded a neonatal intensive care unit to protect our, our at-risk young fetuses. We funded a trauma center in Billings to cover most of the state as the first level one trauma center in the history of the state of Montana. Uh, and also a pediatric wing to serve uh, at-risk, high-risk uh, children with subspecialty needs that they could not get in Montana healthcare. I'm very pro-healthcare, but I think handing our healthcare to the government is not the right answer. And the Democrats want a slow, steady march to single-payer socialized health care. That is bad for you. That's why people fly halfway around the world to come here to get health care, because socialized medicine and single-payer systems are a path to destitution for our health care. And I'm going to fight against that every step of the way. We have to protect certain programs, like pre-existing conditions and Medicare and Medicaid. But when we want to put the federal government in charge of all of our health care, that's bad. And I've been fighting against that. Uh, and that's why they're criticizing me for it, because the Democrats want to see that in place. We gotta bring common sense back to this country. Uh, over the next 25 days, uh, we, we gotta, 21 days now, sorry, there's so many of these, hard to keep track. We gotta, we gotta get everyone to the polls. So please make sure you're voting uh, early, voting absentee, make sure all of your friends and family do too. We got three weeks to save this country, we'll need your help to do it. Thanks for your support. So I got to briefly meet Tim Sheehy and uh, the senator from Iowa and it was interesting to hear what they have to say. I think the common theme uh, is really to vote, whoever you choose to vote for. I'm going to go ahead and leave the entire video from after they did the prayer service and uh, so that you could see the whole thing from beginning to end. It's about 30 minutes. Probably the best message there is, is get out to vote. Whether you vote Democrat or Republican or Independent, get out to vote. That's the best thing for you. There's three weeks to go. Hopefully you're able to still register in your own state or county or however the rules apply, but get out to vote home now and something else I'm going to do today is I'm going to make cookies and I wanted to show you what I got when we went to a Junkapalooza here in Glendive. This 41 grains this is a uh, cookies a cookie crunch cookie mix and so I'm gonna make it up and give it a try. Take a half a cup of soft softened butter with mixed with one egg and add the entire dry ingredients and mix well. So let's go ahead and do that. This thing is a little dry at first, but it is starting to get better. So I will keep mixing it and we'll go from there. So with my added ingredients, it made 26 cookies, even though I ate one, and that averaged to be about mm, 40 cents a cookie. I already did the math earlier. <laughs> anyway, and they were very, very good.